Okay, let's start. So, uh, thank you for coming here. I will talk about this topic, loading for production systems in the container era. So, uh, my name is Tadayuki Furuhashi, uh, one of the co-founder of this, this company, Toria Data. Uh, so, yeah, as he uh, introduced me, I'm a creator of this tool called FriendB. Actually, this is the main topic of this talk. I also open source this tool called Embark. This is more for um, batch-oriented data loading tool. It supports power exe exe parallel execution, transactional data loading, and distributed execution on MapReduce so that you can sync a large amount of CSV files into Oracle, PostgreSQL, Redshift, BigQuery, that kind of things. It's plugin-based ETL tool. And I also created this tool called MessagePack. It's already maybe eight years. I think it's one of the um, <coughs> successful open source projects, I would say, because it's alive for eight years. Most of open source projects just die, but this is alive. Yes, please check this. We are also using this a lot to store data or to uh, communicate uh, between servers and mobile devices. So uh, let's go into the main topic. So we are in container era, in my opinion. So it was in server era, where the service architecture was monolithic, but it's going to change to microservices. You are going to change, or we are also going to change. And in server era, the system image was mutable. You can log into there, edit files, but in container era, it doesn't work. System image should be immutable. And that was operated by ops team, but now that should be operated by DevOps team, which is because you can create a system image, immutable system image, and you can develop the it on your local machine. And that immutable uh, system just goes to a server, just put it, then it works. That's amazingly better than the server error, because you don't have to configure server at all. The DevOps team, the developers, can directly deploy the system to the server. And related to that, the data is was persistent on server error. If you produce some logs on local disk, it was persistent. And if you store logs to the disk, it was persistent. You can log in there, check it, it worked. However, in content error, everything is ephemeral. You will deploy container often, often again and again, and every time you will lose data, <coughs> basically. So the data is ephemeral. So the question is how log correction should work and how metrics correction should work in this container era. So just using syslog or our thing, it worked before in survivor because it, the system is mutable. And the metrics system, we were using Agios and Zabbix. So what we should do? That's the topic of this, talk, uh, of this talk. So let's go into the problems, what we are now uh, facing. What's the problem we have in container <laughs> with logging? So first, system is ephemeral, right? Uh, you produce logs on the local disk, but it could be lost at any time. When you deploy a new system, the new container comes up. It doesn't have the logs stored. It's ephemeral. And uh, it's a sort of traditional problem. If you use uh, log rotation and our sync to sync the data to, uh, from the servers to uh, a central system, there's a high latency. You might need to wait for like one day until the log files are rotated because it's file-based. And even if you sync the file, it's text. It's just a file. Uh, of course, you can read the files by eyes, your eyes. But you have a lot of data, especially if you have more <laughs> servers here. Then it becomes impossible to read by humans. We should process it using computers. Then what we need to do is parsing the data. But because the text file is there, it's hard to parse. <coughs> so it, they, those are uh, more, more like traditional problems we had about logging. And it also becomes container. -aware. So we have container A, B, C, D some deployed somewhere. 
and you are you are you want to collect the information to Elasticsearch so that you can use uh, Kibana to look up the data, visualize data, or you also want to store the data to Redis, Kafka, HDFS, that kind of things. So this is actually very typical architecture in uh, this age uh, system. So what happens in with containers? So first, you have a lot of containers. One server might deploy tens of containers, or at least two containers, maybe. Then those servers will get a lot of connection concurrently. So those systems tend to be overloaded. And this is another problem. Um, <coughs> so to send data to those systems, containers need to know the destination IP address or host name. But embedding that IP address to those images is hard because we want to update that uh, as an application developer. But they are managed differently, and they, their IPs also want, uh, might change. Do you want to recreate all images every time? It doesn't work. So it's a challenge. And as you have more microservices, the integration becomes also harder. If you have monolithic service, it's okay because it's monolithic. But if you have microservices, you need to integration, integrate each other. Of course, my idea is to create scripts to integrate each other. However, uh, it would be this messy situation. You have M, Y, N scripts. And then maintaining those scripts will be hard. And applications change, and you need to maintain. You need to also update the scripts. Otherwise, data is not collected. So uh, what we want to have is something like this. Collect everything to a single location and configure this so that you can route the data into appropriate destination. And that is something I created. It's called Friendly, Fluent D. And we released under Apache license. It's open source. So we're using this. Uh, you have M plus N connections. So it's much easier, especially if you have more microservices. If you add one another data source, what you need is just adding one arrow here as a plugin, not having scripts for two all connections, just one. And adding another data output is also easy because just adding one, one plugin, one configuration to the central system. So I, then, uh, then what's friendly? It's an uh, extensible and reliable data collection tool. So actually, as I said, it's a plugin-based system. And the core is very simple, actually. It's a simple core plus plugins. You can integrate it with uh, various kinds of systems. And it has buffering and HA failover, uh, secondary output, or load balancing. It's reliable. And it's easy to use, as like other low collection tools like syslogv. It just, uh, you can just deploy as a container and collect data. Okay, so uh, let's go into the actual uh, work to use that tool. So I assume you are going to use Docker, right? <laughs> so if you are using Docker, using FluentD is actually very easy. Start FluentD here, installed by uh, Debian package, RPM, anything else. Uh, install FluentD and just runs it. Then uh, add those options to Docker run command. Log driver FluentD and log option. And the FluentD address is here, localhost 24224. If this is running on container, you also need to bind the port. And then for the logs. Uh, with this only configuration, FluentD will receive those data. So this message is coming from this container ID. This name of con uh, this name of content and sources standard out or some error. <coughs> then uh, you can configure configuration file here so that this message should go to uh, Elasticsearch or Hadoop or copy those data into S3 and Redis. It's configurable. That's one easiest idea to use friendly. Another idea is this. Uh, you can embed a friendly loading library called friend logger to your application. This is for more like 
metrics information, application-specific metrics information. So for example, uh, you have an application which wants to log about purchase information. So whenever you have a request about purchase, you call th those methods. Then this goes to friendly as like that JSON uh, structure. You can you, uh, store those data into somewhere for anal data analytics or data integration. Or uh, you might have a middleware like NGX. Of course, uh, you don't want to put the access logs into console. Or you don't want to change the middleware so that it can use friendly logger. In this case, they just log data into local disk. Those middleware just exist. In other case, uh, what we can do is to set up a shared volume. So this directory is shared by this container and friendly. Then add this kind of uh, configuration to friendly. Then friendly uses a plugin called tail to read data, tailing data from this path, this shared path, and then tag it using this name, nginx.access. Then at later configuration, you can match with tag to uh, forward logs into appropriate place. So they are the uh, basic usa usage of friendly. So depending on the use case, you need to choose one of them. Uh, if the data is from log message, console message, you can use log driver. If you want to get detailed application message, you will use friend logger. Uh, friend logger is available for like almost, almost all major kinds of languages, Python, Ruby, uh, PHP, Go. And uh, <coughs> for like access logs or uh, logs from middleware, you will use shared volume. Then actually another thing. Uh, Friendly can also get information about the system, CPU metrics, disk capacity, or memory consumption. Uh, for those information, you can put another uh, input plugin so that Friendly itself can practically get the data periodically. Okay, then uh, you get data in a single Friendly instance. Next idea is to think about the system, the entire system, the cluster. So again, uh, with the containers, we have those problems. Uh, storages will have too many connections, or we don't want to configure the IP, distinction IP addresses to all Docker images. So there are two things. First idea is to have source side aggregation. So idea is to create a friendly instance on each server. With this idea, from application point of view, the log destination is always localhost. Then the container or maybe application developers don't have to think about those destination, which might change. The application container, the image, includes only almost uh, always localhost. Then when you deploy Friendly, which is shared by all services, <coughs> you change this configuration so that you can route the data to appropriate locations. <coughs> and another thing is destination side aggregation. So, uh, friendly can send data to another friendly instance. And friendly actually supports a buffering so that uh, friendly can aggregate data, buffer as a chunk, then flush the chunk into destination. Then the destination system will get much lower load, much lower connections, much lower free candy pair requests. We also can uh, support the active standby for load balancing. This is actually very important, I think. So um, <coughs> with aggregation, uh, there were uh, those problems. So logging directly from microservices is not scalable. The system gets too many connections, too many peer requests. Well, if the system is small, that's OK. But as you grow, it becomes a problem. So to make the system uh, reliable, we want to do connection aggregation and buffering 
for less frequent API requests. And also data persistency during downtime. So this is actually another important point. So those decision could be down. Well, uh, because of like overloaded situation where you want to restart, where you want to apply new configuration, or by mistake, or network error also happens, or DNS error, DNS error also happens. So during that kind of uh, downtime, uh, we don't want to lose the data. And having the intermediate aggregation server, we can persist it, we can store the data temporarily during the recovery. <laughs> and after the recovery, plenty automatically retries. Then you will not lose the data. So I think this is a, a one of the typical deployment strategy for production systems. Okay, so we covered uh, the, the basic use case of FlynnD. So I go into the internal architecture of FlynnD. So this is a simplified architecture of FlynnD. Uh, it's actually more complicated, but basically this. So there are uh, four types of plugins. One is called input plugin, and then filter plugin, buffer plugin, and output plugin. And what FlynnD uh, deals with is this data, JSON data body which is called record, and the tag on the data so that you can identify the data source of this data, the timestamp of the data. Then uh, by using those combination, you can process the data or route the data. So first, input plugin receives data. It's easy. <coughs> so the input plugin uh, receives data or actually proactively pull the data. So one example input plugin is called in HTTP. So this, this listens on a port so that uh, applications can send data through REST API. Another input plugin is Intel, which reads data from a growing file. It reads data from the tail. Another input plugin is called Syslog. It's used to integrate from, uh, integrate with Syslog. You can send data using Syslog protocol, UDP or TCP. Friendly receives it. There are many other input plugins as well. I will cover that later. And um, <coughs> next step is filter plugin. Actually, this is optional. Uh, you can apply one, zero, or one or more filter plugins. What filter plugin does is conversion of the data. For example, uh, <coughs> If you have uh, data which includes password or personal information, you don't want to post the data to cloud services. In the case, uh, you can use an encryption filter plugin to encrypt a single data, single field of the entire data. Or you have an IP address in the data. A friendly plugin can convert the IP address into country name or region name. Or uh, if you are using uh, Nginx and Intel plugin, then you want to convert user agent into browser name, browser version, or OS versions. So filter plugin can do this kind of conversion. It's an enrichment of the logs. Then buffer plugin. So buffer plugin actually doesn't do semantically useful things, but this is very important for performance and reliability. So there are two kinds of uh, plugins. One is called memory plugin. It buffers data in memory. The other is called file. It buffers on file. And um, yes. <clears throat> so having buffer helps input and output, actually. So when an uh, application sends the data to loading system, application, the, the, that system is sort of a subsystem. It's not main job. Loading something is not main. So you don't want to block the process. But it's also a possible issue that the destination is somehow down. You cannot send data. So buffer plugin receives data anyway, and then buffers data there. So that application, from application point of view, it's always non-blocking. So loading system does not affect the reliability or downtime of the input side. And from output, 
from output's point of view, because buffer plugging buffers data as a chunk, it just flushes data to the output side. That's it. So there are several kinds of plugins. One is called File, or F3, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, and more, 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 more. And friendly covers, uh, friendly buffer plugging covers buffering and refining as well, and also queuing. So writing buffer plugin is actually very easy. Just implement one method. Then uh, friendly covers refining and <coughs> reliability things. So this is a plugin architecture. And as I mentioned again and again, a buffer plugin is a very important functionality. It improves performance and provides reliability. The internal architecture of a buffer is like this. It's a queue of chunks. So input side appends a record into the top chunk. The output side takes the bottom chunk and flush it. And uh, size of a chunk is configurable. If the size of a chunk exceeds certain limit, uh, input creates another chunk, then append to there, and the output takes the uh, new, new chunk. Or if time exceeds certain threshold, like 10 seconds or one minute, it creates a new chunk. So depending on time or size, friendly flashes a chunk. This is the internal architecture. And of course, uh, <coughs> Important thing is to have Q here as well. Output is not working somehow because of network problem, DNS problem, something. Chunk will get queued up here. But once that is recovered, when they automatically recover, uh, retries it. And then this buffer can be file or memory, as I explained. It's plugin architecture. So if you have a file, you can buffer gigabytes of data on local machine. So it makes the system more reliable. And having chunks is actually uh, helpful to the system more reliable. Uh, let's think about two approaches to sync large amount of data to somewhere. What is something like our sync or our sync? You sync a big file into somewhere. If a problem happens here at this time, you need to retry from the beginning. Then retry from the beginning, error happens again. Then you retry from the beginning. So this approach is, takes a, actually a long, long time, especially if the system is unstable. But if we have smaller chunks, retrying doesn't have to go back to the beginning. Instead, we can return only this small chunk. So for streaming data collection, having that architecture is very helpful. Another thing we need to concern is overloading during the retrying. OK, so somehow the network is down, system is down. Uh, you cannot send data to Elasticsearch, for example. Then there are queued chunks. OK, system is recovered. You can retry. When the automatically retries. But if you retry everything at the same time, problem happens. The system will get overloaded. Then it will get down again. Or Actually, it becomes impossible to recover it because every time you recover, it downs, recover, downs. It's painful. So what, what Friendly does is to control this flow. Even if there are queued chunks, depending on the configuration, you can control the maximum throughput so that this system doesn't go down. So as a loading system, Friendly cares about this kind of reliability of things. Okay, so example use cases. Um, this is very basic. You have Apache, NGX, web servers. Then that writes data into the local files. That file will be properly rotated, log rotation, like every day, every hour, or by size. Then there's a plugin called Intel, which monitors the changes. And as you grow, as, or as it rotated, it follows the change and gets the new logs. Then buffers onto local file using in uh, buff, uh, file buffer plugin. File buffer plugin. Then flash that data to Elasticsearch. Then uh, here is buffering and automatic retrying. 
And if it's down, retries with exponential weight. And during that downtime, the data is persistent here. <coughs> Another example. If you have one application, your application, I don't know, which logs data into local file. It's called events.log. It includes something. And uh, you don't want to parse that data when you use the data. Instead, you sh that should be already parsed when you try to analyze the data, try to use the data. So Friendly has par uh, parsing mechanism. Whenever Friendly reads something, it parses so that the data is already parsed when you want to use it. So as a build thing, uh, Friendly supports Apache format, Apache error format, or uh, Apache component format, Nginx format, JSON format, CSV format, TSV format, CSV format. <laughs> Those uh, parser built-in. If it, they, are, they don't work, you can create RegExp. Or if it even doesn't work, you can plug in those parsers to Friendly. Once it's parsed, you want to use it for many purposes. You want to put data to Elasticsearch. OK, that is good for recent data, or small amount of data. You can search in real time. But on the other hand, you also want to archive the data. Other case, Friendly's approach is to change the Friendly's configuration file only so that the data is copied into multiple locations. You don't change applications, change Friendly's configuration. So again, uh, log has tags. So depending on the tag, you can match on the tag and copy the data into multiple locations. This is an example configuration file. So source is tail again. And oh, this time we use a uh, web.access as a tag. Then here we match web.something as a, a wild card. And then use a plugin called type. Ah, sorry, plugin called copy. Then this copy plugin copies data into multiple locations. In this case, uh, Elasticsearch and HDFS. They are also output plugins. And um, <coughs> Friendly can also have multiple sources. For example, you have uh, application server plus web application like Apache. In that case, there are two sources. This source can receive data from the client libraries, Friend Logger. Friend Logger will set some tags, like web.error or application does something as a tag, then you can match here and use another output plugins. This is more advanced, actually. Uh, how, many, how many of you guys are using Hadoop or Hive? Not so many. OK, thank you. So <coughs> using Hive, uh, data, should be, data needs to be partitioned by time so that a query doesn't have to read unnecessary data. If you, write, um, if you want to analyze this data, those data are unnecessary. So that wants to skip the, the data. But to do that, data must be partitioned precisely. A log at this time must not be in this file. The log must be in this file. So the partitioning is important for the efficiency of the query engines. From these plugin, output plugins for HDFS and S3 has that partitioning mechanism built in. So once the data is flashed into HDFS or S3, that's already partitioned. You don't have to repartition as an ETL step after this. It's already partitioned. And there are many, many input plugins. Kafka input plugin, uh, SQL input plugin. You can read data from MySQL. Or other web services like Descon, MQP, or this kind of debug tools, JVM Watcher. Uh, there's a website called Friendly Plugin List. You can search on that. <coughs> Out as well. So, MongoDB, 
Ask search, Kafka, Desk, uh, Hadoop, InfluxDB, Graphite. Well, recently we will we are uh, many people invent new technology, right? And every time we don't want to change applications, right? What we do is let someone to write a plugin here, then change the configuration. That's it. Then we can store data to a new system using the new technology. Okay, I introduced some uh, real world use cases. One example is Microsoft. Um, so they have a system called Operations Management Suite. Yes. Uh, yeah, it consists of a data collection agent and data uh, uh, data consumer side. Yes, and data aggregation agent is called OMS agent. So they already already had an agent for Windows, of course. It's Microsoft, but uh, they also wanted to create one for Linux. What they did was to use Friendly as the core. What they say. The core of the agent uses an existing open source data aggregation aggregator called Fundi. Yes, uh, Fundi has hundreds of existing plugins. Then they didn't have to write those connectivities. What they did was just in install the plugin, and then it's available. Okay. Another example is Atlassian. Atlassian is the company behind Confluence, Jira, HipChat, those tools. Um, I think you know about this tool, Logstash, right? Uh, they were also using Logstash, but um, we've been impressed by Fendi and have chosen to use it in cloud loading. So they have a cloud version of Confluence Jira, which is a hosted version. Then they use Fendi and the loading system there. Interesting is to have Kinesis here. So Kinesis is, uh, this is Amazon Kinesis. Kinesis is very similar to Kafka. So it's pub sub system. You publish data, and many applications subscribe from that. So um, interesting knowledge from here is that Friendly is useful to send data to Kinesis or Kafka. Yeah, because the, you have a lot of servers, or a lot of com containers. Uh, installing Kinesis on all servers doesn't make sense, of course. Installing Java uh, collector on all servers doesn't make sense. Don't consume such memory. Instead, uh, they install Flindy on those servers and they collect logs using that lightweight tool and they send data to Kinesis or uh, Kafka. <coughs> then uh, ingestion servers pulls data from Kinesis and they put data to the server. By the way, Flindy core is written in C which is fast. The plugins are written in Ruby so that we can take advantage of the text, uh, flexible text uh, processing. And Amazon Web Services also uh, promotes to use Friendly. So the architecture of Friendly, sponsored by Toyota Data, is very similar to Apache Flube or Facebook Stripe. Friendly is easier to install and maintain and has better documentation and support than Flume and Stripe, yes. Okay, so I explained those examples. Thank you very much. If you have questions, please ask me.